cold fusion could save the world. Unfortunately, it's got somewhat of a flaky reputation. But today I have some quite remarkable news. A group of physicists say they know how cold fusion works. Theoretically, someone just needs to do it. And that's a welcome change from people with devices that don't work even theoretically. So let's have a look. When two small atomic nuclei join to form a larger one, enormous amounts of energy can be released. The problem with this nuclear fusion is that atomic nuclei are all positively charged. For them to fuse, one has to overcome the electric repulsion between the nuclei until the strong nuclear force takes over. Crossing this so-called Coulomb barrier requires a lot of energy at first, but the fusion itself frees more energy than it requires. Usually one tries to cross the Coulomb barrier like the sun does, with enormous heat and pressure. Cold fusion, in contrast, is the idea that one doesn't need this, that instead one can deposit the nuclei into some solid state material and that this will lower the electrostatic repulsion between them. Usually one uses deuterium, that's an isotope of hydrogen, as the nuclei to fuse and puts it in a metal like palladium for the solid state object. Cold fusion has an unfortunate history of fraud, hype and just bad science, which we talked about in an earlier episode, but it's not all bad science. There's reliable evidence that some solid-state materials actually do enhance nuclear fusion rates. Sandia Lab, for example, builds a device called the Neutrista that sends a low-energy beam of deuterium into a titanium plate. The deuterium accumulates in the plate until it starts to fuse. This emits neutrons, so they use it as a neutron generator. However, it's an example of cold fusion, just that the beam takes more energy to create than one gets out from the fusion. There's also been tentative evidence that aiming a pulsed laser at the palladium with deuterium will stimulate fusion for specific pulse frequencies. This suggests that phonon excitations have something to do with it, though this finding hasn't been replicated consistently. The authors of the new paper now say there are three separate mechanisms for cold fusion. Each on its own is too small in effect, but all three together could just make it work. The first mechanism is in the atomic range. Remember that the problem with nuclear fusion is the electric repulsion between the nuclei. Now imagine you could put a thin slice of negative electric charge between them. Then the nuclei wouldn't notice each other as they get closer. Something similar could happen in solid-state lattices near defects where the electron wave function becomes focused and forms a sort of shield between the deuterium nuclei. In the paper they write that this can enhance the fusion rate by a whopping 25 orders of magnitude. The second mechanism they discuss is nuclear resonance between several of the nuclei that you want to fuse. This can be triggered, for example, with the pulsed lasers that I mentioned earlier. They say that the reason this works is that it causes a deformation of the nuclei that effectively lowers the energy you need to make them approach. Unfortunately, creating this resonance eats up energy similar to what would be released during the fusion. They conjecture, however, that similar resonances could exist at lower energy and estimate that this could lead to an enhancement of seven orders of magnitude of fusion probability. The third mechanism the mechanism they discuss in the paper is that the presence of the larger nuclei in the material facilitates the fusion of the smaller nuclei by aiding a quantum tunneling process. This superficially makes sense because we know that nuclei can aid quantum processes that are otherwise impossible. For example, an electron can normally not just emit a photon. However, put the electron in the vicinity of an atomic nucleus and that process can happen thanks to momentum exchange with the nucleus. For cold fusion, they say, something similar takes place. The small nuclei that you want to fuse can temporarily borrow energy from the surrounding nuclei, fuse, and then give that energy back. They estimate that this could lead to an increase of fusion rates upwards of 30 orders of magnitude. Take it all together, they say, and these effects can enhance the fusion rate in materials enough for it to produce net energy. 
They also outline ways to test these individual mechanisms to learn more about them. Most importantly, by using specific materials that have controlled amounts of traces of other elements in them. If you've already forgotten half of what I said, I made a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. What are we to make of this? I suspect that the first effect, the atomic one, exists but happens too rarely, the second one exists but eats up too much energy, and the third one I'm not sure exists, which in other contexts is called the Holy Trinity. That said, I strongly support further studies on cold fusion, because these are low-cost, small lab experiments with a potentially huge payoff. And if it works out, not only would we have basically unlimited clean energy, we'd also have amazing material for a blockbuster movie. It could be called Honey, I Shrunk the Coulomb Barrier, or the man who knew too much about palladium. No, I know. Fusion, actually. I expect royalties. Last year, I coincidentally noticed that if you asked Google for my cell phone number, it gave you an answer. Luckily, I changed my number three years ago, and the one that Google spat out was my old one. But that was somewhat of an eye-opener. I've since signed up to Incogni, who've been sponsoring this video. You see, each time you open a website, it'll try to collect data about who you are and where you are and what other websites you've visited. If you then sign up for a website and fill in your personal details, they can and often do make money by selling your private information to data brokers. Most countries have laws against that and you can ask for your data to be removed, but doing this takes up a lot of time. Incogni automates the process of getting you out of those databases. You sign up and they'll contact the big sinners, request that your personal details be removed, and they'll keep on doing that, and if you want, send you updates about the progress they're making. I'm glad there's now a simple solution to stop unfriendly people doing nasty things with my personal details. Incogni is super easy to use. You sign up, give them the information they should look for, and they go to work, like within a minute, basically. I now sleep better at night, and maybe I can help you sleep better too. If you use our code Zabina or the custom link in the info below, you'll get 60% off of Incogni. That's an amazing deal, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.